Hi guys, we are here. It is Wednesday morning. Um, we are going to do a new read aloud for our reading and the crossover with social studies. Um, if you remember on Monday, I read to you a biography, which is a nonfiction story about a person, right? So it's um, someone else writes a story about someone else. And it is a nonfiction, right? Because it's telling true facts about that person. Now, what's funny about the biographies is sometimes um, they're illustrated, right? Sometimes they use real pictures, sometimes they don't. Um, the one on Monday, we read about Mr. Um, Takahashi, right? The robot inventor. Um, we saw some real pictures with that, right? And there was information in captions about explaining what's going on in those pictures. But because a biography follows a person, right, they sequence the events from the beginning and to the end. So it may seem like it's fiction, but this is very real. It's not realistic fiction. Mr., um, the story that I'm going to read today is about a man named Thomas Edison. And you may have heard about him before because he actually was a resident of New Jersey, um, a, a few towns over in a town called West Orange. So um, I'm going to send mom and dad some information about um, the Edison Museum. Unfortunately, because, um, you know, we're doing our remote learning, um, the museum is closed and they're not offering any virtual tours. But it's something you can look up and find more um information about and someplace that we can look forward to going in the future, right? So it's always cool to have things that you want to do and make a list. Um, so again, remember for social studies, we're talking about different professions and um, Mr. Edison, just like Mr. Takahashi, they were both inventors and they created. So uh, let's start and we'll read about Mr. Edison, Thomas Edison. Let's make this nice and big. Okay. Thomas Edison, Inventor by David A. Adler, illustrated by Sarah Snow. So there are illustrations here, but that's just to make it, um, it's fun to um, draw illustrations about real things, right? So just because it's illustrated and has um, cartoon pictures does not mean that this is not um, nonfiction, right? This is a biography. It's nonfiction. It's real facts about Thomas Edison. So let's find out about him. Chapter one. Young Thomas Edison asked a lot of questions. When someone told him, I don't know, Tom had one more question. He asked, well, why don't you know? And he did lots of experiments to find out. Tom watched a goose sit on some eggs. He saw the eggs hatch. He wanted to know what would happen if he sat on the eggs. So Tom made a nest. Then he put goose and chicken eggs in the nest. Next, he sat on the eggs and found out splat. Oh, splat, that's one of our onomatopoeia words, right? Look at the, look at the picture of young Thomas Edison. What happened to his pant leg? He sat on the eggs and it splat, it cracked. So here's Thomas Edison as a young boy. Young Tom also knew that birds ate worms and that birds could fly. What if people ate worms? Tom guessed that they would fly too. So he gave a girl a cup of chopped worms and water. The girl drank it and got sick and she didn't fly. Tom Edison, the boy who asked all these questions and did those unusual experiments, became the man whose inventions changed the world. Tom Edison was born in 1847 in Milan, Ohio. So that was a long time ago, right? He was the seventh and youngest child of Sam and Nancy Edison. So Sam and Nancy, those were his parents. We see a picture of his mom there with him. Sam had a lumber mill. Nancy had been a teacher. And when Tom had trouble in school, his mother became his teacher at home. Chapter two. Young Tom did many experiments in the cellar of his home. Anyone know what a cellar is? Cellar is another word for basement, right? He had lots of jars of chemicals. He wanted to keep people from messing with them. 
to fix the problem. He had an idea, a vocabulary word, idea. He wrote poison on each jar. He thought that would keep others away. He was right. That would definitely keep me away. What about you? Yeah. There were often smoke, strange smells, and loud noises in the Edison home. It all came from the cellar and from young Tom's experiments. So he was learning and creating and trying to figure all sorts of things out. Tom needed money to pay for chemicals and other things. As a result, he got a job when he was 12. He sold newspapers and candies on trains. Then at 15, he began to write, print, and sell his own newspaper for travelers. He named it the Grand Trunk Herald. So before I keep going, I wanna remind you, remember on Monday I talked to you about um, some complex stories when they get a little more difficult to understand and follow. Um, some stories when we are finding out the sequence of events, right? We see those time words like first, next, then, last. But um, as we get older, right, the, the, the books that we read get a little more difficult, right? They get a little more complex. And we see um, Tom needed money to pay for chemicals and other things. As a result, he got a job when he was 12. He sold newspapers and candies on trains. Then at 15, so they went from when he was 12 to three years later when he's 15. So first this happened, then that happened. So we're following the progression of his life, right? And finding those clue words of the years or the days or the age of how old he was is telling us how things are changing and when they're changing too, right? Um, and if you look here again, then at 15, he began to write. Now, see this word? Oh, I just crossed it out silly. Uh, if you can see right here where it says write, um, what version of write is that? Is that like I am right-handed or you are right? Or is that write words? Write words. And we know because it has the W there, right? That's how, that's how we remember. Write, write words. He began to write, print, right? He used to make his own newspaper because he wanted to make money and also tell people all about what he knew. So let's keep going. Okay, how do I get rid of this? There we go. Tom wrote news of people he met on the train. He also wrote how he felt about his work. The more to do, he wrote in his newspaper, the more done. So the more that you do, the more, um, the better off everything is, right? The more you accomplish, the more people can benefit from it. Tom liked to keep busy. Tom kept very busy on the train. He even set up his own lab in the baggage car where he could experiment while he was on the train. As Tom got older, he kept doing great things. There were no telephones at the time. Instead, messages were sent through telegraph wires. They were sent in a code of dots and dashes. So back then, people used to tap, 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 tap. And that would be um, each, each um, different variation of taps and how long they would hold the taps would stand for different letters. And someone on the other end of the telegraph would then um, write down and figure out what each message was. And, that was and they used Morse code is what that was called. So Tom learned the code. And he got a job sending and reading telegraph messages. He found new ways to use the telegraph. Those were some of his first inventions. Chapter three. When Tom grew up, he became an inventor or a person that invents new things, right? He invented all kinds of things that helped people. At that Time, burning gas lights lit homes and streets. Sometimes smoke from the lights filled a room. 
sometimes fire from the lights burned a home down. So the only types of lights they really had back then were from candles and from lanterns that were um, produced by different types of fire, right? There was gas lights, um, you could have candles with a wick, um, so different types of um, fire. They didn't have um, what we have now, and let's find out about it. Tom was sure, or he was certain, he could make a better light, one that was even better than the, um, the gas lights, right? So he did experiments with electric light. He had lots of ideas. His notes filled hundreds of notebooks. After more than a year of work, Tom did it. He made a light that was safe to use. The electric light is the light of the future, Tom said, and it will be my light. So he invented the light bulb, right? The electric filaments that go inside of that light bulb. Edison's lights were big news. People came from all over to see them. Once they saw the Edison lights, they wanted them in their homes. Tom's lights brightened the whole world. Tom Edison spent his whole life making great things, and the things he made helped people everywhere. Um, so on this next page, we can see just different, um, everything else in our story here was illustrations, right? So here are the real pictures and of Thomas Edison himself and some of the inventions he made. So if you see here, let me get this. Um, if you see here, this is Thomas, his middle name was Alva Edison, when he was 15 years old. So we know at that age he was um, writing um, for the newspaper, right, and selling them on the train. And here is Edison when he was a little bit older. And he invented the first machine that could record sounds and play them back. Without this, we might have no music players or movies and TV with sound today. So to record a sound, and then be able to play it back. Thomas Edison invented that. And if you look at this machine over here, this black machine, Edison made this early music player with his own sound machine. So he created lots of ways to take information, right? Take that sound. He said, there's a problem here. We need to relay messages and get information back and forth from each other. And we need to produce safer light. So he found a problem out there and he said, I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna make it better. He wanted people to be able to record information and put it back out, right? I have a message I want to send, or I want to have a safer light in my home. So uh, we heard that he was born in Ohio, but when he was older um, and he knew he wanted to research and create all these things, he moved to New Jersey to a place called Menlo Park. Um, and that's where he is in this picture. And he created the first industrial research lab um, ever in the whole world. And he did that in New Jersey. And he was nicknamed um, the Wizard of Menlo Park. So Thomas uh, Edison did that in Menlo Park. And after having worked in Menlo Park for a while, um, he expanded and came up to closer to where we live in a town called West Orange. And uh, in West Orange today, there is a museum in his honor, the Thomas Edison Museum. And it's his old um, workshop and his lab. And you can learn and see so much of the things that he used, which he used a long time ago. So um, as we practice in social studies, as we learn how things worked back then and how they help us to where we are now, and um, that his profession, right? People are still inventing new things and creating new things. Um, but we wouldn't have the things we have now without people like him. So if you look at his um, light bulb design uh, here, it's still very similar to the ones we use today. So even though he did this back in 1877, um, more than 150-ish years ago, right? Um, we're still using pretty much the same thing that he invented. Um, and Edison also invented the first machine for viewing movies, right? For viewing films. So without this machine, there would be no movies like Trolls. Um, so Thomas Edison definitely made the world a better place and it was so fun. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to um, be a, go on the seesaw and take a picture of yourself on our re-television and tell me a little bit what you learned about Thomas Edison. First, he was born and when he was a boy, he always had questions, right? And he started doing unusual fun experiments when he was a kid because he always had questions, right? And if someone told him, 
I don't know. He would say, well, why don't you know, right? Um, so he would always have questions. And then as he got older, he started um, experimenting with some chemicals and trying to figure things out, right? Until finally, he did it. And he made his own research company where he was able to invent the light bulb, right? Which was so, so amazing. So even though um, that was a nonfiction biography about Thomas Edison, because it's a biography, it follows his lifetime. So we're able to sequence his events just like something that happened because it was it, um, just like a story, right? So it follows the ideas of a story. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to Thomas Edison. I love um, hearing and learning about him, especially because um, he was a local in New Jersey. So it's so much fun. Um, I'm sure your mom and dad will be able to talk to you about him too. So I look forward to hearing you retell this on retelevision.